first tonight, trains are just one of many modes of transportation to get people and freight from point A to point B, but they aren't the easiest or fastest. In the 19th century, they were. Maine had a unique system of railroads that ran on rails that were just two feet apart, about half the width of a standard rail. They were smaller and less expensive for Maine's small towns. And from the 1870s until the 1940s, there were some 200 miles of narrow gauge lines in Maine. While their use has become nearly obsolete, a handful of enthusiasts are working to keep the two foot lines open for Maine's smaller communities. We stopped by the Wiscasset, Waterville and Farmington Railway Museum. <laughs> The narrow gauge car was much more suited to the amount of things they needed to carry. Not only that, it was also about a fifth of the cost to build it. As you can see from the outfit, Steve Pivovarsky is a conductor at the Wiscasset, Waterville and Farmington Museum, offering visitors rides on the narrow gauge railway that once connected the working Wiscasset waterfront to the interior of Maine. He's also the marketing manager here, telling the history of these important rail lines to thousands of visitors in the summer. From the very simple and mundane, getting to school in the morning, being able to go to high school instead of just grammar school. If you were a farmer along the line and needed to get your produce to a market, you weren't just selling to a local market anymore, you were selling to a national market because the railway connected you to that. Not only that, uh, if you want to bring in some sort of consumer good that wasn't available in the area, say a piano, a record player, even a car early on, it came over the railway. And to ride behind steam and see what it smells like, see what it sounds like, uh, you know, it's, it's a you know, learning experience for young people. Zach Wiley got pulled into the WWNF Museum 28 years ago. Did you know anything about trains before that? Did no, you no. The reason we need to preserve the narrow gauge railways, not just this one, but the memory and the knowledge of all of them, is not just about the past, it's also about the future. Maine once had five narrow gauge railways connecting small towns to larger hubs. They weren't money makers themselves, but provided what Pivovarsky calls a public benefit. The lack of profit on this railroad didn't mean that a farmer in Whitefield or a lumberman in Palermo wasn't making money because of the railroad. So the railroad became a lifeline for those people. Common carrier means that a railroad is in business for public good. Uh, and they're there to provide service to the public within their ability. Uh, and that means if someone wants to hire the railroad to move a piece of machinery, grain to a, a general store, uh, animals, if the railroad's able to do it, then they're obliged to do it. Jason Lamontang stumbled upon the WWNF Museum at 13 years old. He's been coming back ever since to help restore the engines and cars and keep the railway moving forward. A lot of the equipment we restored was built right in Portland at the Portland Company. All those drawings still exist. The latest $250,000 restoration? <laughs> the number nine engine. It's a saturated steam locomotive. This one was built in 1891 uh, in Portland at the Portland Company. Uh, it's one of only two surviving Portland Company steam locomotives, so it's pretty unique. Now it pulls passenger cars into Ulmus Center, where visitors can hop off for a concert, or in the winter, people can ride the rails to a local farm. Our volunteers don't see it as a museum. We see it as carrying on of what this railroad was, you know, historically, which was providing transportation service for the good of the community around us. Over the course of a year, there are some 200 volunteers who work to keep the Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farmington Railway both alive and working. When people come visit the museum, what do you sort of hope they take away from this? That they ride the train to get somewhere. Uh, and then when they're on the train, they get taken back in this amazing time machine that kind of lets them forget where they are, what time it is for a little while until they step off into today again. I don't care how old you are, it's fun to play with trains. My dad was an enormous train buff. I tell you, if he were still alive and he saw that story, 
he would be leaving the house within the next five minutes to get to that railroad. Well, then he would want to know that the Wiscasset, Waterville and Farmington Railway Museum is open just on Saturdays through the winter. Their hours do increase, of course, as the snow melts. Here's the thing, Rob. The snow can slow things down quite a bit. Remember, these are more cost effective railways. They're smaller, so snow and ice can pack into the tracks and a train won't be able to plow through. And what happened while our photographer Devin was riding the rail is that they had to stop where a snowmobile trail crosses the tracks and they had to clear the area because snow had actually packed down onto the tracks. So Devin was stranded. <laughs> where were you? Were you in the lounge uh, drinking hot cocoa at that time? I was in the warmth. I was hanging out. No, I actually, we decided it would be more, um, a better use of our time if I stood back and actually grabbed a lot of those old photos you saw and yeah. then he went out and got some video on the train. But. Well. He, I got that text. Hey, we're stopped. We're <laughs> kind of stuck. A tip of the conductor's hat to both of you. Uh, it's almost a cinematic quality to that story. Visually beautiful. That was a fun one. Thanks to everyone who came and helped us out with that.